Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Wednesday, June 19, 2024. Our reading today comes to us from Genesis chapter 15, reading from verse 1 to 6. And it says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, none born in my house is mine here. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine ear. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine ear. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards heaven, and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Amen. We give God thanks again for his words. Now remember yesterday we spoke about Sarai and the whole plot that she came up with to allow her, her maid to sleep with her husband in order to get a child. Now this is the beginning of that conversation or that story. This is where God was envisioned with Abraham having a conversation about him having an ear about him having an ear but as we examine the conversation between abram and god here abram was concerned about the fact that he didn't have any children he had no one to continue his name or, or his lineage and so he, he he was sad in a sense but god reminded him that don't don't worry I will take care of it for you. I am your shield and I will be your reward. So in other words, I am going to reward you with an heir. And so the promise was made. God took him and showed him the stars in the skies and said, Can you count the stars in the sky? Look at them. Because that will be your heritage. That will be your seed. Have you ever looked in the, in the night sky and see how many stars are there? So it means, therefore, that Abram family was about to become huge. And that's why the saying goes that we are all a part of Abram's family. We are descendants of Abram. So they will say, Father Abram, I have many sons. We know that song. So the promise was made to him. And of course... Abram believed the promise and believed God's word. And that is why it is so puzzling to me that he went along with his wife's decision to, to give the maid to him. I don't see where he put up any form of resistance. Him just lay down and take it just like Adam. Adam didn't really put up much of a resistance when Eve came to him and told him that she took the fruit after she was instructed not to she gave it to him and he eat now this is kind of similar to that because sarah conjured up the plan came to abram and said look here i know that you need a child or you need an ear we need a child and so my plan is that you will sleep with agar and then you can bring up children by her and he said, okay, okay. And that was the end of that conversation. And then now, after they committed the act, then she threw Agar out. Yes, not before Agar was behaving, I guess, like she was the woman of the house now. And so Abraham, and so Sarah had to drop her hand. But you see how things can spiral out of control. When we go against God's original plan or we interfere with his plan to bless us. Because remember, you know, the conversation that Abraham had with God here. At the end, he said that he believed and it was counted him righteousness. 
So if you believe that God is going to do what he said, how you come to the conclusion to make a decision opposite, contrary to what you and God already agreed on? Why are you interfering in God's plan to bless you? Don't you see that you're only going to cause problems for your blessing? But as I say, because God is so merciful and God is so just, he turned that whole mess around into a blessing nevertheless and so I, I i repeat my previous point that we must stop trying to help god god don't need our help when he needs our input he will let us know all we need to do is to be patient so if it is gonna take two years for god to fulfill his promise to you wait the two years without interfering if it's going to take five years, wait the five years without interfering. Because there are still other lessons for us to learn along the way outside of being patient. Understand? And so this morning, whatever it is that God promised you, know that he will fulfill it because he is a man of his word. He is a God of his word. And so be encouraged. Remain steadfast. Remain hopeful. Because God will not let you down. And as he says that he wants nothing but to prosper you and to bring you good health. So he has your best interests at heart. So whatever his will is for your life, it will come to pass. But at the appointed time. And I say amen. God bless you. And enjoy the rest of your day. Amen.